So this is Hey Email, and it's being raved about a lot at the moment as the new email application to rule them all. It is a new email client and platform that is designed as a full Gmail alternative, allowing you to comfortably replace your email. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a tour and also share some of my opinions in broken down categories. So you'll find all of the timestamps below. If you are new to this YouTube channel, please do subscribe because we do plenty of software reviews just like this. So I've been using Hey Email for the last four or five days and over the weekend got some deep playing around with it on all of my devices, both iPhone, Mac and on my iPad. So hopefully I can give you what I think will be an overview uh, of all of the features. So let's start with the design and the UI. Now, Hey Email have actually gone the distance here to make a friendly looking email platform that actually is pretty fun to use. Everything from accessing the menus to utilizing some of the workflows that are included actually is really fun to do. And although it does take some time to get used to, actually will be very beneficial once you do. Now, navigation is actually super useful once you've learned the keyboard shortcuts, which are available in the bottom right hand corner. Now, I'm really not someone that learns keyboard shortcuts, but I really do want to actually dive into some of these more detailed keyboard shortcuts. But at the moment, navigation is pretty easy because I can go from one to two to three to four to five to six and all very helpful. Now, as you said, um, they've made good use of the real estate down here. You can see your previously seen emails with your most important emails in the middle here. And also you've got reply later and set aside. But when I talk about the top features in a moment, I'll dive through how this runs in practice. Now, there are some notable dislikes. Um, I want to mention them. The first is the compose window. The compose window seemed like they weren't finished off. As you can see here, um, it doesn't look particularly amazing. Probably what you just get inside, uh, just get inside of Newton, but at the same time, probably a little bit less. It feels like they could play around with this a little bit more. The same goes to replying to emails in focus and reply. You get this really basic window here on this right hand side, which which I'll talk about in a moment being something I really enjoy, but also something that's very basic. Uh, you only get, seem to get some basic abilities with uh, formatting. The other thing as well is the forwarding setup. It can easily be done, and I'll talk about how to do that in the usability section, but I definitely think there should be a video to explain how exactly to do this, because at the same time, it can be followed through instructions on Gmail, but a nice video would actually save a bit of time. Okay, so let's look at the bread and butter of Hey. Now, Hey Email is available on Mac, iOS, Android, and Windows, and it has its own downloadable application. This is the Mac version, but as you can see, it is a native application. Now at the moment, Hey is currently undergoing some disputes with Apple about their aggressive collection for fees. So I will include any relevant articles that may mention Apple um, just because it may change the availability of the application. Um, as you can imagine, uh, I want to include that as well. There's a great CNBC video that actually summarizes this quite well. I'll make sure to include it below as well too. Um, something I really like about the availability and the cross-platform-ness of this application is that it is available through web, which does mean you can access it abroad and you could also lose your phone and still be able to use it. Um, or if you've got a computer at work and you're not allowed to download a certain software, then that's something that you can access through there too. So when it comes to the tools inside of this application, it feels like the system has been rethought to be a much smarter. And naturally, it's going to take you uh, a little bit of time to get used to such a new method of, of handling emails. So let me show you how that works. So the first thing you do is you go to Screener. And this is basically a way to screen any emails that are coming in. And what's cool is it'll do that in real time. So there you go, something's come in. Um, and what you can do is you can either press yes or no, which means they'll land inside of your inbox. So if I press yes in this one, and if I went to uh, this little option down here, you can see that I've got a few options. I can choose whether I want it to, to be delivered into my inbox, my feed, or my paper trail. Um, in this case, this is probably most relevant to the feed, so I'd press E. And before I go, it's actually quite cool up here in the top right hand corner. You can use something called your speak easy code. So if someone mentions this specific code that you can copy uh, inside of an email subject line, they will get straight into your inbox without you having to go and process the emails. 
Now I'd just say when you're getting this set up, actually you get a lot of emails coming in, uh, which is one, very beneficial if you wanted to unsubscribe from a lot of emails, but two, very daunting because you're actually having to retrain your inbox from scratch. Now in this case, I'd probably press E, which would bring it directly into uh, the folder here. Now this is the inbox here and as you can see it's broken down into what's new, so what hasn't been answered or read to, to what's been previously seen. Now I will talk about some of my nuances around this in the usability section, but as you can see here if I click into the email um, you can see that I can do a range of things. So if I press M for more um, I can actually move this to a relevant location in case I accidentally put it inside of my inbox. I can ignore the friend, I can add a note to myself, which is typical, um, is useful for starting conversations, and also I can get a public link to it or start another friend. I can label it um, and even forward it too, but in this case I'm probably going to move this over to the feed, um, and as you can see it was moved to the feed and uh, you know easily accessible through there. Now if I want to jump over to the feed, all I have to do is press 2 on the keyboard, which means that I can see all of the emails that I've put in the feed from the past and it almost opens it up like this feed like you would have on a social network so you can browse casually. So that's a, a neat way to do that and the third location or the third main location that you would get is your paper trail. So once you've trained a few emails to go in here this is for anything for example uh, like Amazon orders, orders, confirmations, uh, receipts all very useful and can be sent into this, uh, which is very helpful um, because I can see this all there and it won't clutter my inbox. But the one thing is you'll have to continually check in on these other inboxes um, just to obviously make sure. Now one of my favorite features of Hey is something called Focus and Reply. Now I mentioned this earlier, but you get basically a feed of all of the emails that you need to reply to. So you can actually go through and start working on this. You don't actually have to open up any Compose windows because everything's on the right hand side here, which I do appreciate. I really like this because I can actually just focus on the emails that matter. Um, but at the same time, it does give you some basic abilities. So they probably do need to upgrade this main Compose window here. But in essence, it's one of the fastest ways to clear those emails. Now, you're probably wondering, you know, how do I access that? You can press four, but it is also available down here. So you can actually pop this open and if you want to go into that separate view or click on a certain email you can click in but you can go to focus and reply here and if you're on mobile apparently these emails are stored offline um, i'm not sure the availability of the offline uh, is widely available um, but at the same time i know that it's available on the focus and reply and the view set aside board now that is the fifth view is set aside board and these are essentially emails that are just like things to be parked. So in this case, I put in like registering our birth because we can't do it yet or um, a cash, light, cash sale for the lighting that I've got. So you can see the concept behind it, uh, very simple. Now one of the things that you will probably notice is if you press H at any time, you can actually find a person, uh, basically search here, which is really handy. You can access all the relevant files so you don't actually have to remember them if you don't want to. You can also see who's been screened out what spam's been landing in there, what trash, and if you wanted to go to a traditional feed view of your email, um, that is quite cool. You can see what's, everything's been sent or received, um, which is ideal. So you do get these notifications um, on the side of it to see whether something's been um, tracked. So in this case, if I open this one up, you can see that um, it looks like uh, the Medium Partner Program used an article send grid to send this email. So you've got this awareness uh, they've blocked the spy tracking in the thread um, but it actually just gives you a bit of education around each email that is sent. So one thing I quite liked is you can select certain items and move them in bulk to paper trail to feed. You can select this sort of read all view which is quite handy. You can label them, you can merge subjects as well. Um, you can actually merge uh, threads sorry and you can even change the subject title if, if I wanted to uh, change this one. So if I went to here, I could say um, call meeting notification. And if I press save, it'll change the original subject line, uh, which is handy. So if you wanted to see a, a different view to that. 
So you do have some additional features up here. You can access the drafts you've created inside of the Compose window. You can go to Clips, which is small clippings or selections of text that exist inside of emails. You can view your contacts. You can also see your screener history, who you've approved in and out. Down here, you can also access your login and security, set up your forwarding, and also edit the name and photo you have on your account, as well as the account and billing. You do have the ability to download your data. One of the things that I wanted to see was definitely the ability to import your previous Gmail history into this application. Okay, so touching on the pricing, the pricing is $99 for unlimited email. Now they do advocate that being a Gmail user isn't free, and this is due to the fact that they've got ads and of course, um, notably some privacy concerns uh, around the, obviously your whole Google account. Now, Hey does include a full 14-day free trial to get used to it, and if you broke it down monthly, it would be $8.25, which is not too bad. I pay $12 to $15 a month for Missive, so for myself, it would be a saving, but for someone who doesn't pay for email, obviously a big steep up. Now, probably wondering, is it worth it? And my answer is yes. I think it's a good mid-range pricing. Bear in mind that you've got an apps like Superhuman, which are $30 a month, um, and you've got Newton, which is, say, $49 a year. So I'd say it's mid-range pricing, but you get a high-quality application that is really easy to use. Now, if you want to pay more, <laughs> you can get ultra-short two-character addresses. Like, for example, if I got one for myself, it'd be fd at hey.com, and they're $990 per year, and the three character addresses are $349 a year. So if you're really looking to flex, then this is the account to get. But all four character emails um, or more are for are priced at $99 a year. So practically, this is a fairly well-priced um, email app. But then again, if this if you're already paying for email, say in Newton, it's going to be double the pricing. If you're paying uh, for pricing towards like Superhuman, it's going to be more than half your pricing, even a quarter of it. So the usability of this application. Now, I wanted to overview some of my opinions around it. So I'd say it's relatively fast. It's not as fast as, say, Superhuman, but scrubbling between different sections is fairly easy to do. So that's something that is notable. The one and probably the biggest problem I'm having is centered around the whole inbox zero thing. For example, if I started clearing my inbox, I would have to actually choose where that email is going to go because everything else lands inside of this previously seen area, which actually I don't know whether it extends any further, but I feel like that thread will go unconnected and I'll lose emails. So that's something that you have to be aware of. I think you have to give your email a certain uh, status whilst you're in it which can improve your workflow, um, but can daunt, make it daunting as well when you're getting started. So if I was like, okay, I actually need to reply to this email, I would hit L and that would be added into my reply later. So I definitely know that's got some form of action attached to it for later. The same goes for checking into other inboxes. For example, if I went to three, I would have to constantly check my paper trail, but I think this is traditional email um, methodologies that I'm trying to embed inside of this application. Paper trail isn't meant to be checked every single day. It's meant to be checked like every now and then compared to the inbox in number one. That's where you're meant to be checking every single day. And as you train things in Screener, I guess things will get better over time. But it does feel like you've got several inboxes going at one time because of the way that the set aside and the way that the reply later appears on the home page. But at the same time, I feel like it's a good use of real estate and actually it doesn't feel too impending on your productivity. So the other thing that I'm having issues with is the forwarding. Now, whilst the forwarding is very good because I set up my Gmail forwarding and anything inside of Gmail archives, so I don't actually have to check it twice, I still have a bunch of emails that I'm still replying to in my old account. 
um, that isn't obviously searchable and available inside of Hay. So I'm switching between the two applications at the moment and I do need to set up aliases as well so that I can send emails with my old titles instead of having to waste those G Suite accounts. So I know that's going to take a little bit of time but something that probably is just a pain of moving to a new application. So with all accounts, you get 100 gigabyte storage, and I think that's fairly reasonable. Inside of my Gmail, I worked out that I made, I think, over 12 years of use, 10 gigabytes of storage. So I'm still pretty comfortably in it, and I probably won't break that as time goes on. So one of the things I was impressed with is the mobile application having this Hey button at the bottom. You can load up the menu and pretty much access anywhere where you like pretty fast and that's just something that looked really good and accessible on the mobile versions. I haven't had any problems so far with the application uh, but I did notice when they did a big batch of I think it was uh, 10,000 invites the other day it was a little bit laggy um, but that's probably because of the surge in users. Okay so a few fun facts before we talk about competitors and final thoughts. Hey is actually developed by a team uh, called Basecamp. And if you haven't heard of Basecamp, they're a very popular project management software that is, again, priced at $99 uh, per year, which, again, uh, seems to be their go-to pricing. Now, Hey has actually been teased for some time now. And as I said before, 10,000 invites is only a small amount of the 70,000 plus people who have actually signed up um, and getting ready and currently on the wait list for Hey. Okay, so competitors-wise, I think this is a nice balance between Superhuman and Newton. I think it has the friendliness of Newton um, and also some of the functionality, but it has the workflows that are included inside of Superhuman. Okay, so some of my final thoughts. I think Hey is most suitable for those who are looking to start email and take a more formalized approach. I feel like the workflows themselves add a great way to tackle email. And for those who are willing to pay the $99 a year, I feel like it's a good bet. Unlike other email clients like Newton, Hey offers you a address. And that's very helpful, especially when it comes to being able to start things fresh or even give you a new email address from scratch. For example, for myself, I was actually looking for a personal email address because I actually utilized my personal email address for my YouTube, and now it's sort of gotten a bit uh, messy there. So at the same time, I wanted to start a fresh account. Only recently, I created a Gmail, and this actually landed on my desk at the right time. So one of the best things inside of Hey has to be the workflows. Although it takes some time to get used to, the screener, the inbox, the reply later, the set aside, the clips, and some of the other sticky note abilities actually do help you to refine your productivity. I feel like this is a new way of doing email, but one that takes time to get used to, especially when you're starting a fresh account and even forwarding from other applications. So folks, hopefully this was a helpful review for you of Hey Email. I don't have any invites right now, for, to my knowledge, I can't find any. Um, but please do share your opinions in the comments below if you've been a user and also uh, if you are looking at the application. Um, I would definitely love to engage with you in the comments, so please do share them there. If you're brand new to this YouTube channel, please do subscribe. And hopefully this was a useful overview to Hey Email. So folks, thank you very much and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.